In Idle Hands, the typical teen slacker scenario takes a dark turn when Anton discovers that his possessed right hand has a murderous agenda of its own. As he struggles to control his possessed limb, Anton faces a race against time to stop the sinister forces at play before they unleash chaos on Halloween night. This horror comedy explores the hilarious and eerie consequences of having an idle hand with a mind of its own. In a cozy suburban residence, Gary and Norma prepare for bedtime. As they turn off the lights, an ominous message on the ceiling catches their attention. Initially dismissing it as a prank by their laid-back son, Anton, their perception changes when a peculiar sound emanates from downstairs. Gary heads downstairs to explore the source of the noise, leaving Norma to distract herself in an attempt to ease her nerves. Unsuccessful in finding solace, she decides to join Gary, only to be startled by a shocking and bloody surprise. Panicking, she quickly retreats to the safety of their bedroom, providing a surprising resolution to the earlier prank. The following morning, Anton wakes up to an unexpected absence of anyone catering to him. Undeterred, he makes the most of the day, taking care of his asthma. Running out of his medication, he pays a visit to his friends Mick and Nub in the hope that they have some, only to discover they don't. In their conversation, news surfaces about a killer causing chaos in the town. Anton seizes an opportunity to catch a glimpse of his crush, Molly, who drops her lyric notebook. Grateful for its return, however, he is too bashful to capitalize on the situation. Meanwhile, in Beaver, Utah, we encounter Debbie LeCour, disguised as a nun. She is a skilled tracker of malevolent entities. In this instance, her journey to the town has been prompted by a series of murders. However, she faces her primary suspect only to discover a withered hand, suggesting she has arrived too late. Back at home, Anton tries to appease his cravings by blending nutmeg and oregano, as advised by Mick earlier, but the result leaves him feeling disgusted. He gets distracted enough watching TV while spreading mayonnaise on bread with a knife stained with blood. Following this discovery, he stumbles upon his parents' lifeless bodies, and his friends arrive. As they grasp the situation, they promptly suspect the town's serial killer. As they begin collecting clues, the evidence doesn't align in Anton's favor, despite his lack of memory of these dark deeds. The truth emerges as Mick endeavors to dial 911, but suffers severe injury. Subsequently, Nub attempts to flee, revealing that Anton's hand is the perpetrator, acting on its own agenda. Anton struggles to restrain its intentions, offering escape guidance to Nub, but the hand ultimately prevails. While grappling with the situation, Anton tries to distract himself by watching TV, but the hand-related content frustrates him, resulting to his hand impulsively tossing Anton's cat out the window. This leads Anton to Molly's house across the street, where his eccentric demeanor captivates her. They navigated through the makeout session with some awkwardness until Molly's parents arrived. They planned a second date for the school's Halloween dance and Anton exited through the window. Back at his residence, Anton takes a moment to bury his friends and family. While bidding his final farewells, he hears a peculiar noise, signaling the return of Mick and Nub from the grave, and he is hit by a shovel. He awakens, initially dismissing the recent events as a drug-induced nightmare. However, upon descending the stairs, he discovers his friends still hanging out. Realizing the light at the end of the tunnel was down a lengthy hallway, they chose not to venture there and went back to the living. To unravel the mystery of the possession, they decide to delve into learning more about the supernatural entity. Anton seeks out his heavy metal neighbor, Randy, who advises him to occupy his hands. Engaged in knitting to keep his hands busy, however, the loud music they play attracts the attention of a couple of officers responding to a noise complaint. Upon inspecting the scene inside, the officers believe they've stumbled upon the killer. They decided to bust in. Anton attempts to cooperate willingly, but the handcuffing process is not swift enough. Finally, his hand takes over, killing the two officers. He decides to take matters into his own hands, making several attempts to cut his right hand before successfully completing the job. Mick assists in closing off his blood vessels, after which he and Nub go to procure first aid supplies. At this juncture, Anton realizes the hand doesn't necessarily need him to live. He successfully wrestles it into the microwave, just as Molly arrives for their date. After gathering the necessary first aid supplies, the boys are back. Mick reattached Nub's head. However, they unintentionally release the hand from the microwave. On the other hand, Anton convinces Molly that he's not quite ready for the Halloween dance, 
encouraging her to go ahead without him. Afterward, he retraces his steps to address the issue with his hand. Discovering it has escaped, he sets out to find it. Meanwhile, Debbie arrives in town, drawn by the news of a highly active local killer. She encounters Randy and, upon sharing her mission to hunt for a hand, he informs her about his neighbor experiencing a situation remarkably similar to what she's describing. Debbie possesses the one thing that can stop it. They rush to find Anton. The trio steals Randy's Ford, accidentally striking Debbie while reversing, rendering her unconscious. Randy performs CPR, successfully reviving her. Mick and Nub head to the school Halloween dance to keep an eye on Molly, where their gory appearance is mistaken for costumes. Anton, on the other hand, searches for his severed hand. Randy and Debbie join forces with Anton, initially attempting to harm him to end the evil. However, they soon realize Anton has amputated his hand, which is now on the loose within the building. Debbie urgently informs Anton that the hand will drag Molly's soul into hell at 12 a.m. Druid time, just six minutes away. Anton endeavors to alert everyone about his hand, only to be met with dismissive reactions, with the crowd assuming he's interrupting the show. The hand claims the life of the lead singer, creating chaos. Molly and her friend Tanya manage to escape through the vents, eventually reaching a large fan. Molly cleverly uses Tanya's shoe to halt the fan's motion, descending down with a rope. However, Tanya did not make it as she is attacked by the hand. Fleeing to the art room, Molly is unexpectedly struck on the head with a pot, rendering her unconscious. Meanwhile, Anton, searching the art room, engages in a battle with the hand concealed within a puppet. Just as he is on the verge of victory, Mick and Nub drop from the vents onto him, allowing the hand to escape. Hearing Molly scream, they discover the hand in an auto shop, Molly strapped to a car ascending toward a pentagram on the ceiling. Anton, Mick, and Nub struggle with the hand over the controls in an attempt to halt the car's ascent. Despite their efforts, the hand maintains a firm grip. Mick locates a mechanic's mighty Joe Bong, and he and Nub indulge in a bull for strength, while Molly inches closer to the ceiling. Anton takes a hit and blows the smoke into the hand, still inside a hand puppet, rendering it stoned. The hand relinquishes the controls, and they successfully rescue Molly. Debbie hurls a ritual knife into the hand, accidentally hitting Mick's chest, causing it to dissipate in a puff of smoke and fire. Debbie and Randy depart, Anton frees Molly from the top of the car, and they find refuge beneath it, engaging in an intimate moment. Meanwhile, Mick realizes he missed a hit from the mechanic's three-chamber bong and instructs Nub to light me up. In the process of lighting the bong, Nub accidentally triggers the car controls, leading to Anton being crushed when the car descends too rapidly. In the movie's climax, Anton and Molly enter the hospital. Anton, having forsaken heaven to be with Molly, now has Mick and Nub serving as his guardian angels, tasked with ensuring he doesn't revert to his evil ways. After Molly departs, Mick and Nub head to the snackmaster in the corridor, turning off the lights as they exit the room. Anton gazes at the ceiling, revealing the phrase I'm under the bed written in glow-in-the-dark paint. As Anton calls out for Mick and Nub, the duo jests about how they crafted the sign and playfully comment on Anton's distinctive scream. And the movie ends here. Thank you for watching, and I highly recommend watching the entire movie as it is incredibly enjoyable. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing to our channel, so you can stay updated and receive notifications whenever we upload new videos.